Grr. Bing. XRLs. Catch you inside. Revelator L. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alpha. I hope you're all well in these testing times. So look, I've got these uh, heated gloves here uh, from Gerbing. Uh, these are XRLs. Now, I'm preparing for winter riding, uh, but I wanted a set of heated gloves that are actually attached to the bike. Now, I had a pair of Gerbing, actually, uh, heated gloves before. They were battery-powered. Fortunately, they'd ran their uh, time, so I decided to get another pair. Got in touch with Gerbing, said, look, can you send me a set over just to trial and see what they're like? That's what they've done. What I'm going to try and do is do a comparison between the powered ones that are directly connected to the bike battery and also the ones uh, that are powered by batteries. These XRLs can be powered either by the motorcycle battery or by batteries as well. So that's something to bear in mind. Right, let's open the box and get into it. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? You get into a pair of gloves and immediately you can tell the quality. You can feel the quality. Um, you know, there's sort of extra stitching here on the palm there's extra sort of wear uh, material as well it's kind of thick um it's got the padding on the back the knuckle armor the sort of finger armor it's not hard armor but it's just padding as well and it just feels like it's a warm glove let me just i mean these to say xrls this is the ones that you want to look for now you can get these anywhere of course any sort of uh parts uh, motorcycle accessory uh, retailers, let's say. Oh, look at that. That is nice. And it's actually quite, got quite a high uh, cuff as well. And you can pull this together and tighten this up to actually make it more waterproof. Now, obviously, if you wear these under uh, your jacket, then the, the water's going to run right off. Uh, but obviously, if you're in driving rain, then the water might come up as well. So either way, you know, having this kind of pull cord here is going to pull it tight and you're going to minimize the effect of water getting inside. These are waterproof, these are windproof, and all that kind of good stuff. There is this uh, Hapura layer, uh, which is like a, a this insert, which makes it waterproof as well. Uh, they're breathable as well. Yeah, nice, nice. Let me try this one as well. I mean, they are chunky gloves, and but that's what you want for winter as well. Now, as I say, these are heated gloves as well. So even if you haven't got the heating on, I think these are going to keep you really warm anyway. But with the heating on, obviously, uh, you're going to be nice and toasty. Now, for me, I particularly like heated gloves rather than heated grips uh, because it's not so much on the palms that I suffer, it's on the outer edges which I particularly suffer with and it's always been the case. So, you know, although I've got hand guards on my uh, handlebars over my grips as well, that deflects a little bit of the wind, you know, I find that heated gloves are just best. Anyway, so that's why I wanted a new set. But I also wanted the ones that are directly powered by the bike uh, for longer journeys as well. One I found when I was doing my uh, longer endurance rides, I had the battery powers, which are great. They're really convenient because you just put the batteries on and you put the gloves on and away you go. But they're only going to last for a couple of hours. However, with the heated uh, gloves that are directly powered by the bike where you can ride all day, night and day again, if you like, uh, and you'll never have an issue. Right. Let's get into the specs of these, shall we? But these are really, these are nice. I like these. Right, so for the battery compartment, there's a little zip uh, in the inside here, right, the thing. And that's where you actually put uh, the battery in there as well. And then you've got the connector here, the electrical connector, which you connect to your power supply, whether it's a battery or whether it's to the wiring harness that you connect to your bike. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Here is the uh, switch here, and there are basically three modes. There's a low, there's a medium, and there's a high. So one is lukewarm, one is medium warm, and one is kind of roasty toasty, as it were. Uh, but look, nice bit of stretchiness there in the middle. I mean, again, it, it's one of those things as soon as you feel the glove, you feel the quality of it. You feel how, you know, how 
suitable or fit for purpose this uh, glove is. Now this is not a summer uh, riding glove, of course it isn't. This probably isn't even a, a daytime autumn riding glove, but what it is, is definitely a winter riding glove. And that's exactly what I wanted because I ride all year round and I'm going to be riding through winter in all sorts of weathers. So um, this is perfect for what I want. Right, let's get into the harness. Ta da! Right, they provide you with a set of fuses, right? Nice. And uh, here's the connector. So basically, you've got uh, this connector. Let me just undo it. Right, so this end connects into your motorcycle uh, power supply. I'm going to discuss that in a minute. These two leads connect into your gloves, right? So one glove here, like that, and one glove here, like that. So you could be riding along, you know, with this cable, and you can have this flapping around all over your bike. But actually, the idea is that you actually put it down the sleeves of your jacket, have them permanently in there, that your, that's your winter riding jacket, and then you just put your gloves on, clip on, clip gloves on, clip on, and away you go. That's the way they're supposed to be ridden. But there's no reason why you can't have these flapping around, but there might just be a bit of a pain, if you know what I mean. So say either through the jacket, which is the pain in itself, or just uh, you know taped to your tank or something like that. Okay, this bit now goes into uh, your wiring harness. Okay, so here is the wiring harness. So this can be connected directly to your battery. Okay, directly to your battery, and there's the fuse holder there, and then the other end here. That's what you connect this two right so you've got an initial battery power harness then you've got the glove harness that's it so where you put this on your bike is going to be quite crucial so let's say you've got your battery underneath the seat uh, you connect this up but it's always going to be powered up that's the thing you're always going to have direct power to it it's not switchable because it's directly to the battery right that depends if you want that or not so I prefer to have all my electrical accessories not directly off the battery, but offer a of switched power. In other words, as soon as I turn on the ignition, that's when this is being powered. And the reason uh, I like that is because there's less chance of draining the battery uh, this way. So this is what I would do, uh, and this is what I am going to do. Basically, I'm going to power this by the Hex EasyCam. So if you watch my other videos, go back in the archive, you see that I'm using the Hex EasyCam for all my uh, additional electrical accessories. It's going to be 12 volt supply, and you just pick a fuse uh, according to what you need. Right. Now, gerbing, of course, uh, are very well known in the winter riding world. And it's not only gloves that they produce, they do with heated sort of vests, trousers, jackets, all that kind of stuff, right? Socks, whatever. Uh, so you can have all this powered by your bike. Now, obviously, there comes a point where you might be overloading your bike, so just be aware of that. But look, these are the XRL heater gloves, and you know they give you a whole spiel. If you go onto any website, they give you the whole a uh, rundown of it. But they've got this new Micro Wire Pro technology, which is basically just an evolution or just a better heated glove uh, that they do as well. Now, with each settings, the low, the medium, or the high, they've got three amperage ratings, and that's when you're working off the batteries. So it's either a one amp, a two amp, or a three amp rating. Uh, the actual source, uh, say, is 12 volts, but the current draw is 2.2 amps uh, in the highest setting. That's just what this is. Now, whilst the amperage uh, of these are only 1, 2, or 3 amps and 2.2 amps, or whatever it is, you've got a whole selection of fuses here. So the bike will allow you to draw quite a lot of amperage. So you could either set this at a low amperage fuse uh, yourself, you know, let's say a 7.5 amp or a 10 amp or something like that. Now, your motorcycle battery is going to be able to give you a certain amount of amperage. Now, let's say on the bike that I ride, the Harley-Davidson, it actually is powered by a 40 amp fuse. Uh, now, the Hex Easy Can, which uh, manages all my electrical accessories, that has a maximum continuous load or a peak load of uh, 25 amps. So you could just put a 25 amp fuse in it, let's say, and uh, away you go. 
whilst the amperage is only low, one, two or three amps or 2.2 uh, continuous amps, you could put a really low fuse in it as well. And then that would protect it against uh, any sort of surging as well. But obviously there's not a lot of leeway. So it really depends what you want to have and also what other electrical accessories you might have on your bike. So you think, right, okay, well, if I've got uh, this is going to draw, let's say, four amps or five amps, let's say, then I've got another electrical accessory that I'm going to be using at the same time. That's going to be drawing five amps and then something else, five amps. Obviously, you kind of add it up and you think, right, okay, am I going to be using this too much? That's why the Hex Easy Can is quite good in that or very good and then it kind of takes this guessing game out of it. Basically, each individual circuit you can set and then it calculates the cumulative uh, total draw at any given time and it'll either shut it down or, or it'll allow it to continue. So, as I say, you can either use the fuses there and in conjunction with the hex uh, easy can as well or not. Now, I would, I'm going to use this as a as a 10 amp. I'm going to put a 10 amp fuse in it. That's just my personal choice. But I'm also going to set my hex easy can for 10 amps continuous and 25 amps peak as well. So that's the way I'm going to work mine. Got warranty claims on the back here as well, and basically uh, the internal heating wire. This uh, this uh, new technology they've got it's got a lifetime guarantee. Uh, manufacturing faults is one year. Uh, temperature controllers, connector plugs, and accessories are three years. Batteries and chargers ninety days. Uh, accidental damage is not covered, of course, and fair wear and tear is not covered covered as well. Uh, and it's gerbing.co.uk. Uh, that's who you uh, want to get in touch with with any other uh, sales inquiries or technical inquiries as well. But I say, go to your electrical accessories or your motorcycle accessories shop or online shop and you'll find Gerbing there. They're a very well-known brand. But all I can say is that these are good quality, really good quality. So, a couple of questions then. Yes, they work. Okay, right. How am I going to test it before I put it on the bike? Aha! I know! I'm going to get a battery, quickly hook these up, and see if they heat up. Let's do that. <laughs> the trusty 12 volt battery. Right! Ah. Okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to power this here uh, and see how we go. I'm going to put a 10 amp fuse in here. 10 amp fuse in the holder. Waterproof cap. Bish bash bosh. Done. This connector goes into the connector port like that and then basically these I'm going to hook up to the battery. I'm going to make life kind of easy for myself. So I'm going to do positive positive here. This is not how you wire it. I'm just saying this is just how you bench test it really. Okay, positive positive. Right. So, let me put these gloves on first of all and see what they're like. Let me power this up first. And immediately the lights came on. Right, let me just push on push on both blue lights I'm not sure if you can see that uh, blue lights look at that right uh, even though they're winter big chunky winter gloves you can still have a bit of manual dexterity as well okay so the blue color here actually shows you exactly what it is right the blue color is the low setting the one amp setting if you're on batteries or just uh, just the coolest okay the uh, yellow is the uh, medium so i can feel a little bit of heating there's a there's a warm warm feeling let me just press it again to uh, yellow yeah definitely you can feel the these are warmer now okay they're getting this kind of warm glow over my hands I say you know if you're riding in really freezing temperatures sub-zero temperatures I don't think one and two are really going to cut the mustard I've got to say uh, but certainly you just want to take the chill out of your hands yeah definitely and I'm, I tell you where I'm feeling it more is over the the top of my hands the outside of my hands and yeah, a little bit on the palms as well, but definitely you're feeling it. Right, let's go for the top setting, the red, the red. And you basically just press and hold to change your setting. Yeah, virtually immediately I can feel them getting a lot warmer now. Yeah, definitely a lot warmer. 
These are good. I like these. So if you're going to be riding in the winter, you already want a heavyweight winter riding glove. That's waterproof, windproof, it's breathable, it's got a, a waterproof layer, and it's going to give you those heating elements to keep your, your fingers and your palms uh, and your the back of your hands are really warm and toasty. This is the one. Obviously, you pick the different setting according to the weather conditions. It actually heats up here as well. I don't know if this is transference of heat or actually up here as well, but I can feel it on the wrists as well. I get cold wrists as well, so this is uh, this is really nice. Definitely the palms, definitely the back of the hands, all around here. That's what I'm getting this heat. Yeah, this is nice. You really, really feel it. Yeah, definitely, definitely feeling it. As I say, you know, you know, with a battery power, this is going to last. And it says up to eight hours, but let's face it, you know, in really cold conditions, you know, batteries, you know, suffer as well. Uh, but say, if you put this on your motorcycle battery, uh, you're going to have lots of fun uh, with this and hours and hours of uh, warm heating. Right, turn these off. Press and hold. There we go. It goes off. Press and hold. Off. Simples. Right. Let me disconnect this. That is obviously not how you're supposed to do it, but say for bench testing, absolutely fine. And I would always suggest you bench test any electrical device before you put it on your motorcycle as well. So go and get yourself a 12 volt battery from somewhere, get it all charged up and away you go. Right, the next thing then is to actually uh, put this on the bike as well. Let's get all that sorted away, yeah. Okay, I could not in good conscience make this video without doing my motorcycle glove waterproof test. Very scientific, but if you watch my previous motorcycle glove test, you always know that I'll dip them in water for five, 10, 15, 20 seconds, let's say, and see if they leak, yeah? This is supposed to be waterproof. Let's give it a go. I've got a towel here just to dry my hands, right. Let me do this. Get rid of the electrical accessory. My hands are perfectly dry now. Now I'm either going to ruin these gloves or they're going to be brilliant. You know when you really want something to work? Right, let me just tilt the camera down a bit. There we go. Right. I'm going to submerge these, you know, up to the sort of palm area. Let's see if they are waterproof. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Yeah, look, I can count. I don't want to disappoint you, but I think I have to. They do not leak. Yes, I know you're expecting me to say that they leaked, but they do not leak. Yeah, you can feel the, the temperature of the water. Of course you can, and that's why you've got the heated gloves, right? But my hands are perfectly, perfectly dry. Are Gerbing uh, XRL gloves waterproof? Yes, they are. Yes. Right, let's go and put these on the bike, shall we? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so now I'm at the bike. Uh, basically, as I say, with this, you can either go directly to the battery and you can have it all, this power harness, you can always have it permanently powered. So there's no problem with that at all. Uh, or you can have it on switched power. Uh, so with an electrical harness that you might have for your bike, or you just turns on with the ignition, or with the Hexeza cam, which I'm using, as my motorcycle accessories manager, right? That's the way I'm going to do it. So for me, what I'm going to be doing, I'm actually just going to be snipping these two off and attaching this Hex Easy Can electrical connector to one of the uh, circuits. Okay, but as I say, this skip, this bit, you can just skip out. Just connect this to your battery if you want to first, okay? That's the way you do it. Then, you obviously, you've got your fuse in, whatever fuse that you choose to use, uh, and then you just cable tie this to your frame somewhere. Have this port accessible to you uh, just on the side of the bike let's say and then when you're not using it you just put the the waterproof cap on it and away you go right let me do mine and I'll show you
Okay, so I've got the harness connected up to the EasyCan, one of the circuits. Now I need to configure that circuit. So all I need to do is just connect the EasyCan up to my laptop and do that. So if you watch my previous videos, you'll know how to configure it, but I'll quickly run through it right now for you. So I'm gonna set this uh, uh, yellow circuit here and I'm gonna set this to uh, 10 amps as well. And I'm gonna use it as an accessory. Okay, so it was an accessory, and that gave me full 12 volts as well. And basically, with an accessory, it gives me 10 amp continuous or 25 amp uh, maximum for 25 seconds. Uh, 25 amp continuous draw uh, for the entire system. So that's the hex easy can there. So apply that. Okay, so I don't want it to be active with any lights or anything like that. So off with, yeah, we don't want anything like that. It's just accessory power, and it will turn off. Uh, well, actually, I'm not going to have a timeout of 10 seconds. I'm just going to turn this off. Uh, as soon as I turn off the ignition, that's it. The power is cut to it. Right, that's all done. So let's test it now. Right, gloves are on, and the cable is connected to the gloves. What I'm going to do, just connect this to the wire here, coming from the hex can or the battery power. Look, lights immediately come on. Press and hold, Ye blue light, blue light, yellow light, yellow light, red light, red light. And I can immediately feel them getting warm as well. No problem at all. Right, so there we go. Let me just check what the current draw is on these as well. Yeah, so it's basically saying that I've got a peak uh, draw at the at the maximum here, the, the, the red, at five amps. Uh, and my average is at 2.55 amps. So 2.55 amps or a uh, to five, just over five amps. So with that 10 amp fuse actually in the wiring harness, that's absolutely fine. Also the 10 amps, which I've actually set the easy can to, is absolutely fine as well. That's never gonna overload it. You could even go down to a 7.5 amp uh, fuse, I, I would say as well. But say, so I'll leave that up to you how you want to play it. Right, but there we go. So all I need to do now is just cable tie the harness to here. I'm just going to have it uh, poking out here, uh, just where I've got my battery tender port as well. So it's easy to connect for me. And that's it. Away I go. But Gerbing, heated gloves, XRLs excellent in my opinion you can see that they were completely waterproof no problem at all they heat up really nicely these are going to be great for the winter and as i do a lot of winter riding yeah absolutely fine and also i love this as well because it's continuous i don't have to worry about batteries running out especially on the longer journeys the beauty of these is is that actually i don't have to worry about this whole system if i'm just doing a short journey i just get the batteries for the short journey and away i go simples really anyway hope you found that useful but gerbing go check them out uh, on their website or any accessory shop as well uh yeah they're well worth the money but i would say anyway but Go check them out. Anyway, hope you have found that useful. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell, like and share, and check out the website revelatoralf.com. Lots more videos coming. Lots more winter riding videos as well. Ta-da. Bye.